and a good morning to you all on this beautiful fall morning in the Rockford region. I'm excited to be able to share with you how Alignment Rockford has used some of the principles of strategic doing to develop, to begin to develop in our public schools some 21st century brain power. Alignment Rockford's mission is to align the resources in the community behind the public school strategic plan so that students can achieve more in school, that they can be healthier and happier. So I want to begin by asking you to do a thought experiment, to think about something. It's fun to play with these ideas because you don't have to actually do it. You can just think about it. So think about this. What if we loved our public schools? What if we really loved our public schools? What would we be doing? What would that look like? So hold that thought. And then I want to talk to you a little bit about how I found our schools when I moved here in 2008. Um, they had been struggling and continue to struggle with low student achievement. Um, student behavior was not what we wanted it to be. And parents uh, were largely disengaged in that process, as was the community at large. And to add insult to injury, the community was very generous in its criticism of the public schools. Um, they made lots of unfavorable comparisons, right? You've heard this. And they were very cynical about its future. Um, on the other side of the equation, the schools didn't really love the community very much. The parent organizations were suffering from calculated neglect. Um, communication used to trickle out sort of defensively. In fact, one of our journalists called the headquarters of Rockford Public Schools on Madison Street Fort Madison, you've heard that term. Meanwhile, while this was going on, there was a crippling situation in the community where unemployment was very high, and yet employers were having a really hard time filling high-skill, high-wage jobs. There was about, there is, there remains about a 5% gap between the number of people in our community, the adults who possess bachelor's degrees, and the, um, the number of people that employers need with bachelor's degrees to fill all of their jobs. And that gap creates a huge vulnerability for our community. And the roots of this talent gap in 21st century skills are deep in our public schools, where about 36% of the students that graduate are college and career ready. Another 36% graduate, but they're not ready to go to college and they're not ready to go to work, and sadly, about 28% of our young men and young women drop out of high school before they even have an opportunity to, to merge into the world with a, with a high school diploma. So this creates a vicious cycle that's characterized by disengagement by the community, criticism, and, and an atmosphere of perceived scarcity about everything. You know, it's always fighting about who gets what or is there enough to do this. And then as a consequence, school, consequence schools are not producing young men and young women who have 21st century skills to the extent that our community needs them. Um, so I guess I have to go back to your thought experiment. Is that what, when you think about loving your public schools and what that would look like, is it that what it looks like now? Is that what, so there's a mismatch, isn't there? There's a disconnect between what we'd really like and where we are right now. So in this environment, um, we found that there was an opportunity for real disruption, right? In the vacuum of these of great performance, there was an opportunity to really disrupt what was going on in a good way, disrupt in a good way, not like disrupting class, but disrupting something that's negative and vicious. So in 2009, a diverse group of community leaders from all over the community, all sorts of races, geographies, occupations, demographics, got together and said, how do we arrest this cycle? Um, and so that our schools are able to maximize their potential in producing young men and young women that can, can live, work, learn, create, and play in this community. And they asked two, two questions. First, has any community been able to arrest declining graduation rates? And secondly, has anybody reversed them? And so that began a research project. And I spent the summer of 2009 looking at cities and seeing what's going on educationally. I began with A, Anchorage, I'm very linear, began with Anchorage and worked all the way to W, Washington, D.C., but I kept coming back to N, Nashville. Now, I didn't know exactly what I was looking for. 
um, I knew it wasn't a program because programs are always associated with funding and funding comes and goes. I knew it had something to do with system change or change process. I didn't really know quite what I was looking for, but you know how when you're in the store sometimes and the, the sales clerk will come up and say, can I help you? And you say, no, I'll know it when I see it. Um, well, that's kind of what we were hoping would happen is that we'd see something and that we'd know it when we saw it. And in fact, in Nashville, we saw these graduation rates from 2002 really reverse and move very consistently. This was 2009. They hadn't dipped. They were moving very aggressively. And in large urban metropolitan areas, that's tough to do. So I, be I began to call places in Nashville. I called the Chamber of Commerce was my first call. And they said, well, I, we think it some has something to do with alignment with the public schools. And I thought, well, no, duh. You know, of course it would. And so I tried calling the United Way, and the United Way said, you know, I believe that alignment is working now with Metro Nashville Public Schools. And I thought, well, alignment does work. And then I called Metro Nashville Public Schools, and they said, well, we think you probably should speak to Alignment Nashville. And suddenly the, the lowercase a that I thought was the overuse of a buzzword, alignment this, alignment that, suddenly became an organization. And I thought, okay, I'm going to need to talk to these people and find out a little bit about what they do and how they do it. So we did. Alignment Nashville is a collaborative, collaborative impact organization and, and their work is to take all of the resources that are in the community and point them, align them in the direction that this public schools need them to go. And so a little history is in order here. In Nashville in 2002, um, the Education Committee of the Chamber of Commerce got together and they said, let's figure out um, what all of these social service organizations are doing in the public schools and what the impact is. They counted 175 organizations that they knew of that were working in the public schools. The impact of these organizations was negligible. In fact, some people in the public schools argued that it was actually negative because it distracted the administrators and the teachers from their primary role, which was as educators. And so that community got together in loose networks to do some strategic doing and determine what kind of an organization could we use and utilize that would allow us to serve our students, serve our community better. And, um, and so Alignment, Rock, Alignment Nashville was born. So in fast forward to January of 2010, we had taken a look at this, we'd visited Nashville, and had decided in January 2010 that we needed to bring together community leaders in Rockford and let them listen to the community leaders that were active with Alignment Nashville kind of feel, see what it felt like. So we did, we had a two hour conversation. You can see the highlights of that, of that video conference at alignmentrockford.com on the homepage. Um, but when we got finished, we surveyed the people that were in that group and we said to them, what do you think? How did, how did it look? Do you think that would work here? Could we do that? Does, does that sound good? Should we order one of those? And overwhelmingly the response was, that won't work here. And the reason that they gave is that the public schools did not want to partner with the community. So it wouldn't work. And that, of course, that was the first partnership. The schools have to want you to be working with them. So uh, we, we spent, you know, you know how this goes. You spend a few days thinking, well, how are we going to do that? That's, that's insurmountable. Um, and we went to the superintendent and we said, okay, here this, who had been in the video conference, here's the proposition. Your strategic plan is our roadmap. Your district executives will chair these solution design teams, these working committees. You can tell us the areas of greatest strategic need. If you could fix this problem, you could really get lift. Um, and then tell us what needs to be done, and then the committees will figure out how to do that. And then we'll engage organizations in the community around cr uh, implementing those solutions. And she said, sure. And we had kind of stopped and said, well, what? Sure, that sounds good. If it's my strategic plan and my people and you're doing what we need and the community helps us do that, that sounds good. And we thought, okay, boy, howdy, we've got something to do now. And so we, as many of you may remember, we signed a memorandum of understanding uh, in March of 2010 that established some leadership principles under which we would work and we, uh, we began to, to work. The district, did, the district did give us areas of strategic need. They did identify leaders in that. Uh, in their organization that would chair those committees, make sure we stayed on the ranch, right? Because we want to stay aligned, strategically coordinated with what the district needs. And then we went out to the community and said, anybody willing to help with this? And 
the biggest problem that we had there is that we had to we got too many people and we had to say thank you maybe later to some people and that's that's never fun to do but um, we got we got started um, so this then disrupted the vicious cycle with a virtuous cycle. And that virtuous cycle is characterized by networks that are actively involved in the public schools, acts of service about that, um, deep commitment, um, and maybe even some emerging love for our community that needed to be expressed in those public schools, and then moreover, an atmosphere of abundance. Lots of people trying to help do lots of things in a very strategic way. And the acknowledgement was is that schools can't do this alone. If they could have changed and improved things, they would have. They can't. They need, they need help, and they need that done strategically. And that together, the community with the public schools in a coordinated fashion has the ability to begin to produce 21st century uh, graduates from their co public schools. So I want you to think again about the thought experiment that you had. And I want you to think about it in relation to children. So children are high maintenance, they're high service, aren't they, right? But we, with our children or with our friends' children or with our nieces or nephew, we're always looking for opportunities that can give them growth. We, we begin again with this attitude of abundance. Um, we've all seen parents who can't afford piano lessons, who barter for piano lessons or make sure that they get in the band at school, but we make sure that our children get every opportunity. And that attitude of, bun of abundance needs to permeate um, what we do and how we serve our public schools. So I want you to hold that thought and let's continue with the story. So Alignment Rockford began in early 2010 on followed very closely the principles and the structure and the processes of Alignment Nashville. We created a very powerful board, a group of people that, that manage public policy, that run large corporations in our community, that are active in faith and cultural organizations and then we went to the district and they gave us four areas of greatest strategic need and we assembled these solution design teams, this network of strategic doers around those four areas of need. And then they were chaired by a district leader and they were co-chaired by a community member. Because remember, the public schools serve the community, but the community has to understand what the public schools need strategically to do their work. And so we began to engage this diverse um, posse of community members to do some problem solving. Holy smokes, <laughs> it was really hard. So we bumped into, and some of you that are in the audience know, we bumped into the jargon that goes with business meeting, the jargon that goes in education. And at one point, we created a six-page glossary of terms. So NCLB became comprehensible, and co what's a formative assessment? And you know, we had to define what is a tactic and a strategy. So we. We had to learn the language that we needed to share, to speak with one another. We had some people that resigned and said, you know, hey, if you're not going to do something immediately, we've seen this before, we're not. So we had some resignations, and that's, that's un some of those people have since rejoined us, I'm happy to say. But many people began to trust deeply in each other and trust in this process of strategic doing and in alignment. We look at this solution design as a five-phase process. First group gets together and they do what we call tactical planning. Because remember, the, the district strategy has already been set. So we're defining and, and selecting tactics to support that strategy. And then after we've chosen a tactic, which may be high school redesign or um, com community awareness or career exploration, after we've selected a tactic, then we engage the community by issuing an invitation to participate. Now, you might think of that as an RFP, but there's no money involved. So we call it an ITP, an invitation to participate. And we say to community organizations, this is the problem that we've identified, and this is a tactic that we're going to employ to support the district strategies. Can you do anything like this? Can you think of anything neat to do? And what we're finding is that the community thinks of a lot of great things to do, and that network is beginning to work powerfully for the public schools. When we have people re respond to that invitation to participate, that solution design team, that working committee, reviews all those responses and said, these are the organizations that are most likely to reach, reach the goals that we've set for this particular pilot. And they get together in a collaboration session. And fortunately, the sum of the parts is greater. And the ideas sort of generate. And then they pilot what's going on. Before we do anything, We've created an assessment plan, so we know how we're going to measure it. 
and then we do something really scientific, we tweak it. It's a very scientific process. We sit in a room, we go, how are we going to tweak it? And so we have to adapt and adjust. We have to be very agile about what we're doing. And then once it works in one place, we, we have to see, does it work in another place? We have to be able to scale it. Remember Ed saying that solutions have to be, have to be scalable and sustainable. Once we found that it works in multiple locations or with multiple student populations, then the, 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 the proposition from the beginning is that the alignment organization doesn't operate programs and run things. We pilot. And so that program or that activity has to go live somewhere else and be cared for. So that is then institutionalized in another, in another organization. So we have activities around secure infant attachment that are going on in the Talk to Me campaign. We're connecting parents at elementary schools with community services when they have monthly activities. The last two summers we've provided um, behavioral health workshops for teachers, social emotional learning workshops for teachers. Many of you are aware that we have um, been active with the schools in implementing academies um, so that our high schools can um, divide their schools into smaller schools within that school, that all kids are taking college and career prep curriculum and that there are partnerships developing with business, civic, post-secondary organizations. We have an academy expo that we have, uh, will be holding in November that allows students to learn more about careers. So I'm going to go back to the original thought experience and ask you, can you only serve children that you love? Or can you slip into that virtuous cycle by serving and then loving? And I think that um, the idea that I think is worth spreading is that as you serve schools, um, they improve, and when they improve, they yield benefits in this great intellectual property that comes out of them with children. And we build a 21st century brain power capacity in our community, and we love our schools, and that virtuous cycle allows people to enter it at any time. And I challenge you to love your public schools and to serve them. Thank you. <laughs>